The mixer in Cubase is a very powerful tool and has to offer much more than just regular mixing functions. I want to explain some of these functions which I think are really practical and I do use a lot. The first one is the undo and redo buttons. These are the same if you use Alt and Z. They do exactly the same as your undo and redo function in your normal project window, except that they have a different history and can do things your normal undo function cannot. That, I think, is really great. What I mean is, for example, if you apply changes to your channel, let's say, for example, to the equalizer, and you now press your command and set button to undo something because you applied changes and you want to undo these, that won't work because in your normal history working on the equalizer is not a function that you can undo. So nothing happens. But your mixer can undo that. Your mixer has different functions and the undo button can undo changes that you apply here in your channel or here in the mixer, like changing the volume. That as well won't be shown here in your normal history, but your mixer can undo that. But that is only half of the function that you have in your channel with undo and redo. You also have here in the left zone, you see on top you have four different functions. Your visibility, your history, snapshots and the synchronizing button. And if you go to your history, you can see all the things that you did in your mixer and you can undo them or redo. So that is a list of things you did and all these things you did here in your mixer you won't find, like I said, in your normal history. So that is a very powerful tool. These two buttons and the history I do use a lot. The second thing I think is really practical is the snapshots. That is the little camera icon which will allow you to quick save different mix versions. That is really practical if you are mixing your tune and you want to compare some things like for example you mixed something like that and you click the camera icon then a snapshot was created. That means your mixing process right now has been saved with this snapshot. Then you want to compare it to a different version of your mix and you create that one and you click on your camera icon and you see another snapshot was created. Now you could go back and forth between these two versions of your mix just by clicking this tiny icon here in the back. Then you get a warning that things you did to your automations cannot be saved with snapshots. And your mixer goes back to the first mix version you saved with snapshot 1. And you can compare it to the other mix version which you saved with 
snapshot number two. You can of course rename them so you know what you made and you can make notes down here so you don't get confused with the versions you saved. If you did like one of these but it was not perfect, you did apply some minor changes to it and then you thought well that was the better one, then you go up here to your drop down menu and you say update my snapshot and then these changes are applied to the snapshot that you liked and for example if you don't need the other one you can just delete it. That I think is a very helpful tool if you want to compare different mix stages or versions these AB referencing functions are really helping a lot in the mixing process. Next I like to have a search function that is also very practical if you have bigger projects and you want to look for one certain track then you just click the search icon and you can either type in the name of your track or you go through your list and you click the track that you're looking for and it will be highlighted in your mix console. That is a very quick way to find the tracks you're looking for. I also like to use the channel visibility functions a lot. It took me some time to integrate these in my mixing process but since I figured out how these work I use them all the time and these are also super helpful if you have projects with a lot of tracks. You can reorganize your mixer very fast to your needs. At first it goes like this you can if you want to save configurations of the channels you want to work right now on. I most of the time have three different ones and one of these I call main that is the one where I am working on right now and I have all the tracks shown in a way that I think right now is the most practical. But I have two more. One where I just have audio channels and another one where I have my MIDI and uh, virtual instrument channels. And if I click here in my drop down I can switch between these three views and work more easy on them because I do not have to show all the tracks at once and then get confused with how many tracks there are and where I am right now and on which track I'm working. If you want to create one of these configurations it is really easy. You just open your left zone and go to visibility. Here you can see all the tracks of your project and if you tick one of these it appears or disappears here in your mixer view. If you wanna show or hide some that you need or don't need you do it until you like it. You go here and say create new configuration and just name it. And then it is saved up here. And you can recall it when you think it is the right time for your mixing process. Here in the left zone where it says visibility, you can show or hide all of these 
that are in one group folder. For example, all my MIDI tracks are in my MIDI tracks group folder and if I click it here on the left, then all of these are shown or hidden. If I do that to just one track, only that one gets shown or hidden. But the visibility tab has another one down here, which is the zones tab. You can create different zones in your mixer and that is a right zone, the middle one and the left zone. And if you want to, you can like glue some of your tracks to one of these zones. That is really easy. If you open up your folders, you see three dots appear. And if you want to, you can just click one of these dots and the track where the dots are right to the left of it will make it stick to this group where you clicked. So for example, I have a right zone and a left zone and on the right zone I just have my master track and on the left zone I have my two group tracks and in the middle are the other tracks where I'm working on right now. Why would you need these three zones? If you do have a lot of tracks in your project or you have the tracks shown bigger, then Not all of the tracks can be shown at the same time. Right now I only have one, two, three, four, five in my middle zone that are visible at the same time. And I can scroll through these to get to the track that I want to mix right now. But you see, even if I scroll the ones in the middle, the left and right ones do not move at all, so my effects and my master channel and as well my two group channels are visible all the time and I can work on them even if I change the view in the middle. So that is the reason I pin some of my tracks to the right or left zone because I know I need them all the time even though I want to do some changes here to this track and then go here make changes to that track and so back and forth I all the time need these ones and everything you do here that concerns which tracks you want to see or work on or hide, you can save to the configurations that you already made or save as a new one. That view can be specialized by these two buttons up here. Both open a different menu. The first one has functions like show all of the tracks. So since I did hide some of these for my main view they couldn't be found in the mixing process. Well I have them in my main view because I need them mostly right now. But it is also possible that I want to mix a track that I rarely need. And in my main 
configuration I only have a few of these available. For example, I have my stereo track 1 and then my stereo track 3, so there's no stereo track 2. And if I want to apply changes to it, I could, for example, open the left zone and then look for my stereo track number 2 and show it here. But sometimes that's just too much work. I don't want to go here and find that one and that and then down here that and open and close the left zone. So you could just go show all tracks. Then you would find all of your tracks back in your mixer window. And if you want to go to another configuration, you just click it and can work on that one again. That is, I think, a very good thing to know to improve your workflow here in the mixer. So to configure the view to the needs that you have right now. Another really cool thing is to show just the highlighted ones or to hide the highlighted ones. So if you're going to show all my tracks and you realize that right now there's a few of these that you want to work on like specifically you highlight them and you say show just these. Another possibility of course would be if you realize well I don't need that one or that and that you could say hide these and then for example save this as a new configuration. And the third function you have is a filter function. There you can easily show certain types of track. So let's say you have your mixer open and there are a lot of different tracks that you have like MIDI and audio, effect tracks, VCA, instrument tracks and so on and you just want to show or hide a certain type of track, you can do so with your channel filter. For example, you could show your input channels, your output channels, only your MIDI channels, all of these, just the audio channels. You see, it is so easy to change the view of your mixer to the needs you have and still, if you want to, you make the configuration that you like right now and you go here to the left and save it and you can switch back and forth between the configurations you made especially for that project. 